Oh, that was funny. I like it. That's our signature. <laughs> Service bell. Ring the bell, and we're here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, well, what was happening? It's been a while for episode three. Yeah. First of all, guys, welcome to our podcast. Yeah. Episode three, which has been postponed for a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's because uh, we, first of all, we, we apologize if for some chance you are still waiting for it. <laughs> um, the thing is, we're being in this huge task in Yestar. Yep. Yeah, we both are. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, so what? What is it? Really? Yeah, it just showed us. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we are, you know, testing this certain V twenty. Yeah, you got it. That's yeah. right. V twenty. Uh, we don't have to be subtle about it. We have. We are testing V twenty of three CX. Sure. For well, for a lot of time, for a long time, yeah. right? Testing, evaluating, reporting, and you know, do some researches yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of work to do. Yeah, so that's why we've been, that's what we've been, what we've been, what we've been working on. Sure. For the last so few weeks. let me ask you a question. Yeah. What do you think about V twenty? Really? <laughs> no, no, hold on a second. You don't need to tell me everything about all the well, features, but just tell me what do you what do you think about? Um. It? Okay. So first of all. Uh, it's not appropriate for us as two still Star employees, of course, to evaluate and talk about the features, the functions, you know, the business strategies here, mm -hmm. right? To pass judgment, it's not right to do so. So we're not going to do it, okay? Um, but if you're asking my feeling, that's right. <laughs> um, I, I have to th say this: my feeling about three CX V twenty. Is really really complicated. Complicated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I got your point. I think mm -hmm. I got your point. I got mm -hmm. a same feeling, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, when we talk about V20, I don't think this is gonna be some sort of you know new firmware update. I don't mm -hmm. think so. This is more like a, more like a sign of the market. Yeah. It's more like a sign of all manufacturers' uh, actions mm -hmm. for New Year for year 2024. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we, if we see 2024 uh, and we see the V20, mm -hmm. um, it is definitely a very, very tough decision to make. Sure. They have done, they have done a couple of them, uh, you know, tough decisions exactly. in the V20, right? Yeah. And we as manufacturer, another manufacturer actually, we are in a position where we can understand why they kind of understand why they do this and yeah. that, right? Yeah. So I think it's not even about the V20. It's not even about 3CX, right? That's just a manufacturer, a phone system manufacturer mm -hmm. trying to handle. Yeah, I guess that's about what is happening right now. So what is wrong with year 2024? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> well, it's well, if we are trying, if we are to explain what's happening, what's going to happen in 20, in 2024, we have to look back at. 2023. <laughs> you mentioned 2023. Yeah, Funny yeah. story, you know. Yeah. Uh, at the very beginning of year 2023, I believe most of us we feel really happy. You know, we're, we're so pumped. <laughs> that's we're right. so excited because we are officially open, reopen in China yeah, here it's in 2023. Three years. Yeah. We're <laughs> like okay, okay. We're like okay. So we're finally open. Sure. We're free to travel. Uh, the the all the actions and demands have been suppressed for three years. The dynamic. It, the dynamic is good. Yeah. Everything is on our side. We're going to be on it. We're going to make it happen. We're so happy. But then 2023 just give us a huge slap on the face. Oh, not right? that bad. Come on. I know uh, year 2023 is not that perfect, <laughs> but not that bad, right? Did you get a race? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you get right. a race as well. Sure thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So if we look at the, 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 the economy, right, yeah. and we look at all the difficulties, not only us, but um, our partners are to face sure. in year 2023, and certainly in year 2024, we will understand it. Um, to be honest, in Yastar, things are going pretty good, especially if we compare to other companies, other business, mm -hmm. right? and other countries sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The thing is, uh, we got a raise, yeah. right? And we, as a company, we managed to get a growth sure. in year 2023. Of course, that's because our partners are great, yeah. right? 
Um, but the thing here is we definitely see more difficulties to manage the same amount of growth. Exactly. Right? If we look back at 2020, 2021, you know, the start of COVID, um, if we work, if we take same amount of effort, we are we will easily get more, you know, outcomes. Sure. But now, we work really, really yeah, hard. Things are just getting harder. Getting harder. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I believe everybody knows, right? That's right. Because of the economy, because of the chaotic, mm -hmm. right? So with the economy, we don't have enough currency in the market. Uh, people don't have that much money, right? Yeah. And at the same time, people don't have that much expectation on the economy. So people are being very, very reserved, uh, reservative, right? Sure. Reservative, yeah. that's the word. They're, they're just not that willing to invest too much money on the basic company infrastructures yeah, uh, like yeah, a phone yeah. system. Yeah, they need to look at the money that they invest that can create like instant sure. uh, benefits just right away. Yeah. Right? And phone system as a basic manufacturer um, basic infrastructure, infrastructure right. yeah, is certainly a long-term investment. Yeah, yeah. So that means people are. Yeah, that means we got lots of challenges. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> manage to get a growth and get sure. a pay raise for us too. <laughs> sure. It's hard. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. Um, so 2024, we only well, when we look at the market, it will only get worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't see any sign that things can get better. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I guess we also got some plans, some strategies. Yeah. So let's get back to this. Yeah. Everybody have to face this situation. Sure. Right. And that's why V20 happened. Right. Yeah. Um, we're not here to talk about it. Uh, so um, Yaystar, as I mentioned, just because um, the situation is okay, it's fine. Right. Um, apparently, you guys see the new frameworks we have published, yeah. right? And I believe we've been talking about the roadmaps, sure. right? So clearly, Yaystar take the strategy of Yaystar is kind of aggressive. Yes, you kind of aggressive, and yeah. we take a very positive action. Yeah. to to do just, it. Yeah, just because there are no much much demand in our traditional. You know, share of market, we will create new. We will look for new demand, right? Yeah. We will create new features, new scenarios where our pro our product can fit new customers, mm -hmm. so that our company includes our uh, our partners can get new opportunities, yeah. right? To maintain, to survive, or even to grow. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you we'll guys, just try our best to do something new on our products. Yeah, you guys for, see, yeah, helping our partners to explore. Yeah, you guys see the omni-channel messaging. Yeah. You guys see the you know WhatsApp, Facebook integration mm -hmm. for the, uh, for the contact center. For the solution. contact center, sure. yes, we're sure, we're surely going deeper and deeper, right? Yeah. And at the same time, uh, new things has been. I don't know if I'm if it's okay. Ah, to come on. Them. Because you are not, already in the podcast. Basically, because they're not <laughs> officially in the roadmap, guys. They're not officially in the roadmap. Um, we are still talking about SBC. I am quite sure that SBC will be out there in some of the regions first, mm -hmm. where SIP is really challenging. Sure. Yeah. Are we going to launch hardware at SBC? Uh, as far as I, I know, uh, it's a software-based uh, SBC. Right. Yeah, but anyway, that's that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, because originally some of the countries like Middle East, CP mm -hmm. is challenging, so our system cannot work that well, right? But now yeah. if we got it, we try to fi fix it with an SBC, sure. right? Sure. And of course, you know, our bank call centers, that's a new thing, right? Yeah. And um, I guess we will also have an important update on the cloud solution. Big plan. Yeah. Are, are, we, are we allowed to, to say it? <laughs> Okay. But anyway, this is our podcast. <laughs> Just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a—it's not official, uh, yeah. but they're uh, we're evaluating multi-tenant sure. solution. Yeah. So that means we're gonna have single. We already instance got a single instance and we multi, got multi instance. instance. It's already—it's uh, already on the table. Sure, it's sure. already here in yeah. Instar, and they are being—they are evaluating and trying to create multi-tenant. Multi right. Yeah, that so with multi-tenant, that's a whole nother market. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is a good point. This is just like you mentioned. We're mm -hmm. trying our best to help mm -hmm. our customers to explore more business opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Even 
year 2024 <laughs> is not that good. <laughs> yeah, so, because if we don't work hard sure. to find new opportunities to explore in a bad year. Yeah, that makes sense. That we are all on a slow death. Sure. It's not going to happen. Sure. But, so the thing is, uh, and that's why we got a pay raise. Yeah. <laughs> because things are going to be more difficult. And right. that's why Yaystar is actually hiring. Yeah. The team is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's just because we are looking at new features, new functions, new fields. Right. Mm -hmm. We need more people here. Right. And Yaystar happens to be able to afford it, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it is going to happen. And I, there is a number. Um, well, I'm going just going to say it because. Um, so I, what was it? <laughs> um, in year 2023, the yeah. investment for uh, for the development mm -hmm. in Yaystar, product development in Yaystar, is 25 percent of the yearly revenue. Well, wow, that's really that's, that's 2023. Really, a big amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tw you mean 25 percent of our profit, and we just invested the in revenue, the R&D department. Yearly revenue. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Goes into development. Uh, well, in year 2024, we can expect, you know, similar. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> similar number. All right. Yeah, because we are looking at new features. Sure. sure. We have to invest on new features. I have to say, well, this actually, in within just between us, adds a lot of pressure to us. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. But at, at the same time, we are excite, excited. Mm -hmm. And actually, the reason why we are here in Yay star, uh, except for the apparent eighty percent reason that we got a raise, <laughs> is that um, we agree with this. Yeah, this strategy. I think it's good. Sure. I think ac actually, I want to. Work it, it's a pretty team. smart strategy. Only with this strategy you can keep the company. Uh, I don't know. know just if, keep rolling. I don't know if it's smart mm -hmm. or dumb. Uh, well, it depends, on, it depends on the new updates. <laughs> but, what new features are we going to launch? Right. At least I think it's the right attitude. Sure. And I want to work in the team with this kind of attitude. Yeah. Uh, it's not that we're going to judge other attitude, but this is the thing that is happening right here, right? This is one strategy. And you will find many other companies who is taking very similar strategies, like expanding their operation. Sure. Taking this opportunity. Yeah. Like, for example, VTech. Oh, VTech. Yeah. Yeah, big company. Yeah, they are purchasing... Snow, right? Yeah. 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 And I think it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Right? Snow can get more funds. Sure. More backups, more money. And VTech got a very good brand. Sure. Very good, a brand with very good reputation. Yeah. Uh, well, everybody knows VTech. VTech is probably one of the most famous company in this <laughs> business, right? Because they but, are but, but they're <laughs> also very famous in the other one. <laughs> yeah, toys. Right? Yeah, this is the situation. If you are making toys, if your brand just have a big, if you have you have, you have like three shell, three lines of shells in Toys R Us, <laughs> but it yeah that 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 is who you are, right. despite of all the all the success you can sure. get. Uh, so that's probably why they got snow. To begin yeah. with, right? But that's as I mentioned, this win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Is that a smart way to phase twenty twenty four? Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. for both of them, right? Snom get money, VTech get a good brand, right? Great, win-win, right? Yeah. And of course, similar things also happening. You know, uh, with Amitel. Yeah, they are buying like Astra, other brands. Sure. Yeah. Similar situation. So if you are having problem, financial issues, or if you need the need to survive, need to expand, but you don't have enough, you know, money, you look for this kind of opportunity, yeah, right? That's where right. you get 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 them again. The, yeah, you're just yeah, supposed to do support. anything you can to yeah. to you know take actions like his ad for yeah. year 2024. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's happening right there, right? Sure. And that's good. Um, other companies are taking this kind of way to phase 2024. Yeah. Right? Well, good to be back. Yeah. Short break, right? Yeah. Here comes well, break. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. We, we changed the hairstyle anyway. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So previously, I mm -hmm. guess some points you mentioned that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. were talking about some other manufacturers' actions like yeah. uh, VTech, uh, yeah. like, uh, you know, Mitel. Right. Yeah. Basically, yeah. everybody's making a great effort to, you know, face challenges to sure. find new opportunities, mm -hmm. yeah, to seek opportunities, basically. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So yeah. I prepared another question for yeah. you. <laughs> A tricky question, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we start our topic today with V20. So my next uh, okay. question is, um, what about V20? Uh, okay, I know you will just let, you won't just let it go. That's right. <laughs> uh, but we won't be talking about our feelings about the features found mm -hmm. in the products, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, of course. Uh, We're not going to talk about features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, I mean, what do you think about V20? Because that's also an action from 3CX mm -hmm. for facing mm -hmm. all these challenges. Well, I I'll put it this way, okay? Um, I think, well, I cannot say they are heading to a wrong direction. Mm -hmm. uh, all the improvement, all the things that they have done, all the changes they have been made, uh, but they, ha they have a good reason for it. Like for example, if you really look at all the things that all, all the you know new features, all the changes the changes they made, where they added some features, they remove some of the features. Yeah, like, uh, they do it for good reason. That is security. Yeah, that really makes sense. Well, mm -hmm. it makes sense to enhance security. Um, I think the reason why people react so strongly, you know, some people act very strongly <laughs> yeah. about it. Is because it doesn't match their expectation of a V20. Yeah, I see it. I see it. You mean yeah. most of their updates this time, it's more like they just try to improve the security. So that's kind of like a, something you're supposed to do. You don't need to spend too much time or too much energy to, to tell well, people, hey, this is going to be something important for uh, V20. Well, uh, that's a big part of it. Yeah. A big part of it is to you know enhance the product you know, security-wise. Sure thing. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right. Uh, the thing is, you well, it's V20. People expect more features. That's right. Because they need it to find new market, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But instead of new features, uh, they have a couple of, you know, very used features are removed yeah. because of security reasons. Sure. Uh, so um, we are manufacturers. We both work for manufacturers. We understand that yeah. All manufacturers have a long-term plan. That's right. Right? That's right. Even though we, they re, we remove some of the features, that's because um, we want to make certain changes on the system. Eventually, we're going to add it back, but it needs some time. Yeah. So when I see V20, I think of our past. You know, uh, you may, yeah, that reminds that just reminds me about our P series system at the yeah. very beginning. Yeah, when we just launched P series, <laughs> P, 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 P series PBS, sure. you know, people were like, okay, it's great. Yeah, you, you guys have made some great, great features in the, you know, the FQD and the operator panel, the right. call center and stuff. That's great. But where is my PV camp on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the but awkward my, moment for yeah, us. But where is my auto click? <laughs> where is my integration with all those CRMs? Sure. Right. People were like this. Well, yeah. we added back. Yeah. You know, but just take some time. It yeah. takes time. Right. It takes time. So it, it it's a very awkward yeah. phase where sure. all new products have to go through. Why? Once again, because we don't have all man all manufacturers are are working with limited resources. Exactly. Right? I mean, you do have your plan, you do yeah. have your strategy, yeah. you have your roadmap. So yeah. Absolutely, for most of your features, mm -hmm. functions, mm -hmm. you have to make sure everything is staying in the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, step I, by step. Yeah. Ideally, when you remove some of the features, you have a replacement already made. Exactly. Right? But that's very difficult. Right. Yeah. If, especially when you are managing. Well, well, I have to mention some of the features because uh, otherwise the conversation just cannot go on. Like Stone. Sure. sure. Right? Yeah. Stone has been removed. Why? For security reasons. Sure. But some would say, well, not maybe not technically removed, but it's, you know, basically <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for auto feature, auto right. function for everybody, for many people. And the thing is, if you have to use Stone, you have to open ports. Sure. If you open ports, that brings risks. Yeah. And apparently, people don't want that. But you need to, but if we are our development team or product management team, if they are to remove this feature, uh, we may, we need to have a replacement already prepared. 
Yeah. And so we can tell people, okay. You have to provide a alternative for yeah, our customers. And it has to be better. Sure. Especially you do that on a V a big upgrade. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> a big upgrade. People have high expectations. Sure. And and well, there are many rumors about you know mm -hmm. V20 and how the price will go, how the tax will go, how the company. Well, we, we just ignore that. Okay, sure. It's a big upgrade. People yeah. need new features. People need an upgrade. That's okay? right. That's right. But V20 is a temporarily. I don't want to say downgrade, but it's not an upgrade, mm -hmm. right? Um, well, I guess pretty sure they will make it better. They will make it complete in the future. It will just take some time. Well, yeah. Even though we are from Yeastar, we have no doubt about it. That's right. I think we both agree uh, what kind of company, what sure. kind of brand 3CX is. But the thing is, it just happened in a very, very At this moment. awkward time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where people are seeking opportunities, sure. seeking ways to survive. Mm -hmm. But, you know... At least for this moment, yeah, uh, it's that's not what exactly what people need, yeah, to fulfill to fulfill their you know goals. exactly. Mm -hmm. And that also tells us that we, as the manufacturer, mm -hmm. we shall get closer to our partners. Yeah. Seriously, mm -hmm. just like I mentioned, you do have your plan, you have your strategy, step by step. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's okay. You can keep it this way, but you have to get closer with your partners, mm -hmm. collect their information, collect mm -hmm. their feedback. Yeah. Then try your best to find the balance point. Yeah. I mean, of course, we cannot provide a perfect, 100% yeah. sure, perfect solution. True. But Impossible. what we can do is, at least we can do something to find the balance. Yeah. Like, for example, where we've mentioned some of the features we're about to do. Right. Right. So, yeah, um, that we do this because, well, we need to we need to offer what the customer needs. Sure. Right? And, well, let's get back to this one more time. So, 3 is definitely doing that. Exactly. But, well, it takes time. Sure. Once again, it's awkward time. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, very, very subtle issues. And they have to handle it correctly. Yeah. And this is just what, what's going to happen. And we, once again, we as a manufacturer understand each other because we have same job. We have yeah. same mission. That's Even right. though we're, we're competitors, you know, somehow. But, yeah, we can understand that. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess uh, this is everything that I have you know to say about yeah that's about, quite reasonable actually yeah, 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 that's quite yeah. reasonable yeah. well uh anyway i guess mm -hmm. since we just mentioned about the challenges for manufacturers and also i mentioned we shall get closer yeah, to our yeah, partners yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so for this podcast uh, for this very podcast we also get this special you know part which is going to be the interview mm. uh, we prepared a very special interview with uh one of our partners yeah yep who is that a uh, david David. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, well, just hold on a second. Let's just give the stage to David. Okay. So let's hear from a real partner. Sure. A real man who is working in the front line to, you know, promote a system, to promote, to offer solutions for end users. Yeah. What do they need? What are they thinking of? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's go ahead. All right, first of all, David, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your time. It's so good to have you in our podcast. It's my pleasure, Jason. It's, um, it's, it's a bit of a treat for me. I mean, I've, never, I've never done a podcast before, so you know, this, is, um, this is all new. It's quite exciting. Right, yeah, that's exactly the first time, right? Uh, so yeah. first thing, I would like to ask you to give us a brief introduction about yourself, uh, about your company. Anyway, just, just show us something, yeah, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I, my name is David Sills. Um, uh, I work for a company called PNTS. We're uh, an MSP uh, based in the northeast of, of England, um, up near Durham, or in Durham, actually. So it's uh, anybody from the UK will, will know where Durham is. Um, and we support, there's seven of us in our company, so we're fairly small. Um, but we support about 80 clients based around the UK, right, stretching from Newcastle, uh, which is near Durham, uh, right down to London um, and everywhere in between. Um, my history, I've only been with, I've been with this company now for about seven years. Um, histor before then, I worked um, for a local education college um, for about 16 years. I was there for a long time. I left there and went to work for a company called Greg's. Now, in the UK, everybody will know Greg's. Uh, maybe it's not uh, where you are, Jason. But it's a it's a very big bakery chain based in the UK, um, and that was great. It was a real step up for me. 
um, and I was only there two years when when Mark, my director, came and and, and offered me the role here at PNTS, which which is quite exciting for me because I've never worked for an MSP before. I've only ever worked at the college or or at a big corporate company um, where the the day to day is very different. Um, you know, it's your network, it's your decisions, it's your money it, budget, I should say. Um, so you can kind of do what you would like with within the confines of your budget. Um, anybody who works for an MSP will know that's not the case. You know, it's it, it's it's all down to how each client. Um, values what they need to spend on on it um so it was a great move for me i've loved moving um and i love this kind of work much more than what i was doing for all those years but how we've moved into communication tele, telephone communications is that uh all those years at the college and then then at greg's we i've always been involved with the, the telecom side of things so Predominantly, I'm a I'm a network guy. Uh, you know, I'm a system administrator. But off the back of that, I've always had a a, a, a part of the admin of the the telephone sides of the, the companies I've been at. Um, right back to old school. You know, my first telephone system was an old CS one thousand um, Nortel system. Uh, you know, <laughs> the good old fashioned boxes on the wall with all the wires terminated back in the TN numbers and. And all that good stuff, well before digital lines even, it was all analog, um, so well before voice over IP. Um, so I've had, luckily for me, I've had the experience right from that ground up, right through. Uh, it makes us feel old now, <laughs> but, it's, um, but uh, that, that's kind of my history with telecom. So when I moved to PNTS, we didn't really have, um, we, we didn't offer communications as a service, um, uh, but our clients, inevitably came to us when they had a problem with the phones or they had problems with anything like that. So, and we uh, indirectly got dragged into fixing it. So we decided, you know, why don't we try and offer this service ourselves? So we, we started off putting some free PBX systems in for a couple of people. Then we moved into um, a more um, structured version of, of well, I'm allowed to say a 3CX, I guess I am, I suppose. <laughs> um, we, we, we became a 3CX partner and then, um, and that's where I kind of waffled a little bit there, didn't I? Um, I'm sorry about that, but that's that's kind of my history. All right. <laughs> I don't okay. think you really wanted a life story there, but um, I, I guess I gave it to you. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Sure, no um, problem. Yeah, so so history, I've, my experience is, is, is in telecoms and networking. Um, and, that, and like I say, it's, trying, it's moved into the PNTS side quite nicely. So but that's where we are now. Yeah, well, sure, that's all right. Where we are now. We're, we're now into... Um, in the year star. So, mm -hmm. so good. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. You're quite experienced in the industry. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I got a question. All right. So something interesting, I got a question here for you is, well, as we know for the, you know, past year, especially year 2023 up uh, till now, uh, the global economy is not that perfect to be very honest. Sure. You know, funny story is at the very beginning of year 2023, we all believe this is going to be a great year, but actually it's not that yeah. easy, right? What do you think about it for year 2023? Uh, is it going to be an easier year or is it going to be a harder time for you guys? I think um, it's not getting any easier. I don't think uh, nowhere near really, is it? I, we were the same mindset as you, Jason. And, um, but well, surely we're, we're through the dark stage there. It has to get better from now. And then, it, well, it's not really, is it? It's just, if anything, it's getting more difficult. Not just in, in the IT um, side of things, but, you know, just everything. Every cost, energy costs, uh, cost of living costs. Is, in the UK especially, it's, it's, it's drastic at the minute. So, so money's tight for everybody. So the, we were exactly the same like you just touched on. We thought it was going to get really positive and, and come out the other end, guns are blazing, but it's really not the case. Um, We've actually been lucky with our client base, um, as it happens. The, the vast majority of ours are architects or structural engineers or somebody in the in the building industry. So as it happens, for whatever reason, that industry hasn't slowed down in the UK. It's still very active and, and, quite, and quite positive at the minute. So our clients haven't really been affected by too much of the economic downturn as yet. So... Um, as a knock on, we haven't either. Um, so we've been very lucky so far. But all of our costs are going up, um, as are theirs. Uh, we're trying not to increase prices. Um, 
but it's difficult. It, it, it's one of those where you, you really concentrate more and more on the costs more than you than you perhaps did in the past. Sure, sure. Yeah, I agree with that. And this is going to be the same point. Uh, me and Ramon, we were discussed about this before. We believe that people in the market, they're going to be, I think people are more and more careful, especially when you try to push them to invest their money on some That's infrastructures right. like a phone system, right? That's right. That's yeah, right. it's, it's going to be the, yeah, yeah, go yeah, ahead. It, it's always, I mean, it's always been a bit of a difficult sell, but, um, but certainly more now, you know, especially if they've got, um, it, it, it for, phone systems is a good example, actually, because everybody has a phone system that works of some description. It may not be great, but you can pick up a handset and make a call. Um, so when money's tight anyway, to walk in and try and convince somebody that what you need is this solution um, because it gives you all these other features and advantages. We think it's worth it uh, and we know it'll be worth it for them, but it's it's a difficult sell for them when really all they're doing day to day is picking up the phone and making a call. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, it's not getting any easier in that in that respect. Okay, so uh, what's the major problem? Is it gonna be a solution with not you know not not that much features or functions, or maybe this is just because of the cost? It's gonna be expensive. What do you think um, about it? Well, it's a funny one, you know, Jason, because I've been thinking about this when when I was um, preparing for, for for our chat, and I don't know what. The roadblock is, it's a number of different things. I think a lot of the time, some of our, my clients, and I'm sure it's the same for the MSPs, are, um, are not open to change that much, especially when it comes to technology. Um, they're fairly tech savvy, you know, they, they are designers and architects, but um, the idea of moving to a software-based telephone extension or an app-based telephone extension, more, a lot of ours, we get a bit of pushback on that because it's for different reasons, whether they don't like thought of it or they don't want the app on their personal phone, or whatever it is, there's a bit of that. Um, there's the cost side of things, but even that, um, traditional phone systems are, are expensive, you know, uh, as I'm sure you know that, that, that nine times out of 10, any solution that we would offer would probably save the money on, on what they're paying already for a traditional uh, ISDN based um, phone system. Um, so, that's not really a massive factor in reality, but it, it kind of is because it's something that there's still a bit of investment into um, new handsets, for example, or um, the, the time it's going to take for implementation or uh, cost for there is there is a cost, but but the monthlies tend to be you know reasonable in comparison to what they're already paying. So even that's not some block. It's just it's just change a lot of the time, I, I think, for our customers um, generally, but. Um, it's something else that they don't have to worry about. If the phone just works, it works. But because they're used to using phones in a traditional manner where you just pick up the phone and make a call. Um, so the difficult point for us, I think, is trying to explain to them what the benefit is from moving to something like Yearstar um, and everything that goes with it. Uh, because the great system, you know, 3CX is a great system. All these other ones are great systems in comparison to what these people have already got. Um, it's, get, it's getting that point across and, and make, uh, helping them understand. Um, that's a bit of a stumbling block sometimes. Sure, sure. I think it's like it's, a night times. Yeah, yeah, it's not 100% cost based. You know, it's it's a, it's a bunch of different factors. A low cost has become more of a factor. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think this is like a, maybe nine times out of 10, you know, when we talk about a phone system, you know, for our customers, most of these features are enough. They don't need to change it. If you really want yeah. them to change it, you have to give them something really special. You need to figure yeah. out some new opportunities, some new features, right? I think that's going to be a good point, right? Well, yeah, well I, I, I just hold on a second. I got another question for you. I'm very curious <laughs> about this. So you yeah. mentioned these challenges, also some you know problems. Uh, what did you guys do in year 2023? I mean, what's your strategy in year 2023? Um. I'll be totally honest about, about our strategy is that um, with communications and the, the services we offer, we, we've got like, we're not huge. We're not a big, we're not a big telephone provider, but we've got about 40 PBXs out there um, with different customers. So our strategy as a company doesn't really um, center around the, the telephone side of things. It's more of, it's more of an um, organic kind of thing that we inherit from our current client base. For example, we don't have any clients that have come to us purely just from a telephony point of view. Um, 
all of our t telephone systems that we provide are all to customers we had previously, um, which is something I would like to change. You know, I, I would love more customers just to turn up and say, um, we, we need a phone system, can you help us out? Because uh, it hasn't. It, it, that's not the path we've gone down yet. Um, so I think if there is a strategy, it's it's promoting our, us as a company, as a telephone provider. Um, at the minute, we're a, net, we're a network support provider in MSP, um, and we do telephones as well. Uh, so it, it's kind of that situation we've fallen into. Um, like I touched on just before, mainly because we found ourselves supporting telephone systems anyway, regardless of who the provider was, because our clients would come to us um, and see our phones are not working. Uh, and we like to we like to pride ourselves a little bit on the fact that we will look after that kind of stuff. You know, if we're looking after your network, we'll look after your phones and we'll look after your printers and you look after your whatever other third party might other third party products you might be using. Um we we, we would log faults on their behalf kind of thing. So so we always got dragged into the into an issue if there was one. Um so that's why we started just providing it ourselves. Um, so that's kind of how our model is is progressed to where we are now. So if we did have a strategy, it loosely would be to promote us as a telephone company as well, a provider. Because um, we also do lease lines and, and, and things like that as well, you know, so it all kind of pulls into the same category. Um, so funnily, funnily, we're having this conversation. I, I did have a, a chat with our directors last week about how we're going to Start promoting this because, <laughs> as it turns out, the year start market them pack is quite good. Um, that, that that's that's part of the partner portal. So we're going to use some of those templates and 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 get more active on LinkedIn and and email campaigns and things like that. Um, so strategy wise, we probably haven't got one directly for telephones. Um, that's always been part of our main strategy. Um, but yes, I would like to develop more predominantly the phone system side of things. Sure. If that answers the question, I'm not sure if it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for sharing. All right. So uh, another question. All right. You mentioned all these points. They're really interesting. So another point is uh, for year 2023 or even in the future, uh, you know, you you guys are working together with so many vendors. I mean, not just mm -hmm. Yaystar, not just a phone provider, you know, phone system provider, many vendors. So for facing these challenges, uh, what are these vendors' actions? <laughs> what do you think about it? So different yeah. vendors, they have different actions. So are they good? Are they bad? Yeah, well, yeah. There's a mix, isn't it, Jess? There's a definite mix. Um, the overarching feel of it, I think that could be better. You know, I, I think um, a lot of our... Uh, Pretty much all of our clients now have moved to the Office 365 platform for emails and stuff like that. So but there's, there's, we, there's, we don't manage any more on-premise exchange servers apart from one or two. Um, and their support is, isn't is great. You know, I, I'm really struggling with it at the minute. Um, and because you're relying on them completely now, um, as opposed to being able to administer your own exchange server. That's one example, sorry. Um, so I think going forward, I think they need to get better. I, I really do think they need to get better because the, everybody's heavily reliant on them now. Um, they're totally integrated. Um, it's not just a fact. If I use Microsoft as an example, you don't just use them for email anymore. You know, you use them for Teams and you use them for phones sometimes. You mm -hmm. use them for SharePoint and OneDrive and everything else that goes with it. So if that goes and you lose connectivity or whatever, there's something not right, uh, you, 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 you know, you're stuck. You're really in trouble. So their support needs to really up its game um, and just be more transparent with people. And this goes around to all vendors, really. And then, you know, how my, I keep picking on Microsoft as an example, but they're always updating and pushing out updates and things like that, that, you know, a lot of the time cause issues um, where you, in the past you could hold on to those updates and you could push them out when you wanted to push them out. Um, so more transparency from from vendors, more um, support, more. I mean, I don't even think the cost side of things is a big deal, really. I think everybody's happy. I won't say happy, but everybody understands that. Yeah, you know, that's the way of the world now. Costs are going up regardless. Um, so if prices increase, providing you know they're, they're reasonable, um, I don't think people have an an argument with that. Um, but more. more you know, be honest, open, transparent. Um, sure. And ju just to touch on Yester, I mean, um, it, it's it's 
I've only really started with with, with the partners um, this, uh, uh, membership th th recently, but so far it's been brilliant. I'll have, I'll have to say that. Um, you know, credit where it's due, even with the time difference. I, I find myself waking up in the morning and I have an email sitting waiting for some from somebody at your end, which is nice, you know, and, uh, and then I reply and sometimes I might get one that day. But yeah. if it's the next morning, I know it's going to be there the next morning. Um, so, so, yeah, so, you know, thumbs up for that. Um, I am very impressed in comparison to the previous one. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, that so, that's actually a very important point. I think you mentioned this point is very important. It's going to be very inspiring for every single one of the manufacturers in the market. I mean, uh, if you're going to raise the price, like you mentioned, if the price is reasonable, that's fine. I mean, people are going to yeah. accept it. That's nothing wrong yeah. with it because everybody knows what's what's going to happen right now, what is going on with the market. But you have to be very serious on the service part. This is something you really need to spend more time. You need to take a very positive strategy on it. You need to push it. You need to improve the efficiency for your service. I mean, yeah. that's really a good point. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean, like you can say, most people in general don't mind paying for a good service if it's a good service. But if people are just ramping prices up and then in a lot of the cases, the service actually deteriorates, you know, that's, that's what gets people angry and upset about, yeah. um, you know, so you have to get that balance right. And I know it's, I don't think it's too much to ask from a, a vendor to offer good support. Um, I think it's critical because for me, from me personally, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, I'm the person they see in the front line. Um, sure. And if something goes wrong with a, with a vendor's product that I can't fix, you know, I need their support to be able to, to help, help me do with that. Otherwise I'm dead in the water and, and my it looks terrible on, on my company so True. um that's a big one good support which yeah. is, you know, that, that's an, that's an old age thing really it's nothing new um but it, it is it does appear to be deteriorating some things at the minute sure yeah. sure yeah thank you for sharing all right one last question <laughs> yeah. thank you so much one last question so uh well we're in year 2024 new years right so yeah. what's your expectation for the new years <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, this is this question might be that open. All right, it's like an open question. So let me just make things be more specific. What's your expectations for vendors? What's your expectations for for the market? Let's say. Um. Ooh. Uh, a little you bit tricky, it, right? <laughs> it is. It is one of the tricky. Uh, you, you caught us a little bit that one. Um, my expectation. I, I think the vendors are going to. Well, you know what it is. I don't. You know, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm really conscious about how the world is going in, in general. To be honest, and I'm not. Uh, there's a few things you now that really shock me, um, and it's pessimistic to say, but I, 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 I'm struggling to see where things are going. Um, I think, from a technology point of view, I'm sure. I think AI is going to be a big thing. I think that's keep on, that's going to keep going forward, um, yeah. regardless of whether we want it or not. And how that's going to integrate into um, the systems you've already got, like phone, well, phone systems, for example. Or um, actually, I think I heard one in one of your previous podcasts actually talking about um, voice to uh, text to speech stuff for IVRs and things. Um, I think that's a massive something like that, where you know the translation things are happening on, on sure. Google phones, things like that. So, or like, uh, I think vendors are going to go more down the the path of. Um, <laughs> Unified communications, really, whether that's translating languages or text or um, just making the communication side of things more transparent and, uh, and easy. Um, but I don't see any real, again, might be a pessimistic view, but I don't see any real groundbreaking changes from in this industry in the next 12 months. Um, I think things are going to improve on what we've got, hopefully. Um, but apart from... Um, Maybe the AI. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling to think of anything else. I mean, my, we would like as a business to go down more the integration route with everything that we do. Um, so uh, the, the service we provide it covers everything from phones to printers to uh, servers to local lands to lease line connections to backups and offsite backups and disaster recovery. And yeah, I think it, more more products are going into the more overarching um uh, design where they, they cover everything you know or, or cover more than they do you don't just have an email server anymore sure uh, you don't just have a telephone system anymore you know you have unified comms and you have right uh, 
with web meetings and video meetings and stuff. So I think it's more, if anything, it's just going to be going more on the development of what's already there. Um, and it's sad, really, because I, I, you know, I'm a positive kind of person. I like and I like technology and I like change. I just think it's going a bit stale at the minute in a lot of in a lot of places. But apart from comms, actually, telephone systems are going great. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> there were some nice new features that I really I really enjoy. But um, but yeah, okay, difficult. Yes, and it is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. So, is there anything? You think it's going to be important if the manufacturer or the vendors can provide to help you guys to improve your business. Uh, what are these? <laughs> um, things like, um, do you know, this maybe it's promotional material, it's something that's that stuff is promotional material or help with marketing or um, a better understanding of what their products can do. Um, uh, it's it's um it's difficult sometimes to to sell a product e even though we we know the product and we like the product and we know the product will be good for the person we're trying to sell it to, um a lot of the time it's it's a case of us trying to convince them with with very little to back it up. We're complaining to a website or a white paper yeah. or a brochure, but um you know it, it, some more. Well, what's good from from a unified comms point of view is ESR and 3CX and all the other ones that do it is the ability to, to fire up trials quite quickly, and you can it's in, it lets me walk into a, into a business and and fire the laptop up and say, look at that's that's that that's how it works. This phone's here. This is how this connects, and that that's the cell. You know when they can, they can see it in front of the face. Um, a lot of vendors don't offer anything that helps us with that. Um, so if anything, maybe it's a bit more in that respect. It, I used to enjoy years ago when people like Microsoft used to do roadshows. Um, they would go all over the, the world, and especially in the UK. And every three months, they would turn up at a, a local hotel, um, and they would showcase products and, and new features and things like that. Uh, and that doesn't happen anymore. It just doesn't. Um, and that was invaluable at the time. Um, so, and whether that's ever going to come back, probably not with the, the way you can communicate things now, like we are doing now. Um, but I used to really enjoy that, and I thought it was a good thing. Um, sure. So perhaps, so literally, perhaps almost going backwards a little bit, you know, and engaging with your with your seller, resellers, and your customers a bit more. Right. Yeah. If that makes sense, I think. Sure. Sure. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much once again. Thank you so much for sharing, and uh, thank you for joining our podcast. No, it's so good, good to you. have you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, maybe, th maybe thanks. I've really enjoyed that. So um, thanks for the invite. Well, all right. Good to be back. Yeah. Oh, I uh, guess David just gave us lots of, you know, points which are really interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, we surely appreciate David showing all, well, sharing all his ideas, his mm -hmm. comments, you know, what he wants. That's very important for us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically the thing, ha the thing, is, whatever is happening around us, uh, well, David at least is taking very, very active, you know, positive meth, you know, method, sure. to, you know, to 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 face all mm -hmm. the issues, all the challenges, and uh, well, we love to and, see. And that, I right? also guess, you know, uh, what he was talking about, mm -hmm. all these points are very objective because yeah. he's the MSP. Yeah, he's exactly he was exactly talking about the thing. How are we supposed to do to yeah. survive in the market? Yeah. So basically, we need to help each other. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And well, that's. Good. That's valuable, mm -hmm. and um, we need to, you know, help it help each other mm -hmm. so we can we can all, you know, survive and sure. you know manage to do better, mm -hmm. right? And I guess there's another point which mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. for both of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, for dealer and manufacturer is, oh. uh, we have to try our best to get closer with each other, especially manufacturers. Exactly. We need to be close. We need mm -hmm. to be present. We need sure. to be there. Right exactly. There. You know, talking to people, listen to people, mm -hmm. and you know, know the market, know whatever everybody needs. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's, very, that, that's actually very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of which, I think well, podcast is exactly one of our effort, right? That's right. Uh, as we were talking about everything in yeah. the first episode, yeah. we guess this is going to be a very good opportunity yeah. to to discuss yeah. everything with yeah. our partners. Well, this is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, it will be very, very difficult for us to get like 20, 40 minutes talk. Sure. You know, with you guys, know, let, let you guys know what we're thinking. Yeah. And, uh, well, 
podcast is actually a very good way.、Mm -hmm. And also,、uh, we love to hear you back. That's right.、Mm -hmm. That's right. So, guys, if you want to learn more about like、uh, mm -hmm. exactly what are we supposed to do, or、yeah. what's going to be the best strategy to face、yeah. the challenges, or how can we work together with MSP,、mm -hmm. or how are we supposed to improve as the MSP working together with the manufacturer? Well. All of these, let us know. Yeah, share us your ideas. Sure, you know, like what do you think of twenty twenty four? What's your challenges? What do you want a manufacturer to do、mm -hmm. to help? Yeah, let us know in the comments. Yeah, and、we'll... and, I, and I guess maybe we can invite David again. <laughs> oh yeah, because David is a very very, very professional,、right. experienced MSP. Sure, right. So why not? <laughs> yeah, because we mentioned that there will be new opportunities. Yeah, as you know. Solution providers for, for for phone system installers to work with MSP, right? Yeah. If you are really thinking about it, please let us know in the comments. Pop up your question. We will surely invite. Yeah, we're just gonna make another、back. arrangement for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, talking about the arrangement, I guess、yeah. we we own our yeah, we still own、right? you guys one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, which is gonna be the conversation with ITSP. ITSP,、yeah. yes, because well,、uh, well, it's a little bit different from M MSPs.、Mm -hmm. With ITSPs, it's a more direct bond、yeah. between phone system, right? And a lot of people actually are looking into you know, working with ITSP、sure. one way or another, right? So we are going to, as we promised, invite an MSP, an ITSP, ITSP here, right?、Yeah. And not remotely. Mm -hmm. But、it's, in person, yeah, that's right. It's gonna be a face-to-face,、-face, uh, you know, conversation. Yeah,、uh, in this podcast. Yeah. So this will be the next episode. Sure. So whatever question you have with ITSP, right? How to do business with、yeah. them? What are they looking for? How do they evaluate a phone system?、Mm -hmm. Anything. Anything you are interested to know? Yeah, just get prepared, guys. You can take a piece of paper or something. Just write it down. Get prepared. Let and, us know.、Uh, yeah, yeah. Let just... us know what's your question.、Sure. We will ask the ITSP. Yeah. In person, face to face, eye to eyes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Catch you guys in the next one. And we promise we will get this done as quickly as possible. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's see you next time. Sure.